I'm here with Chris today at Hook, Line, and Paddle, and we're going to talk about what you should think about when you're picking a seat, and we're going to cover all kinds of them. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin, and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. What we're going to do right now is talk through some of the seating options and the evolution of seating on sit-on-top kayaks. And we'll start with the native stuff. And with that, I'll bring Chris back in to give us the entire history and what you have available right now and why it's an improvement. So, Chris, let's start with the old native stuff. All right, so this is the original native seat that came out of their Ultimate 12 and 14.5 as a solo or as a tandem. Um, so they did a plastic frame on the bottom for it to slide into the kayak. Like we talked about before in some of the sit-on-tops, if you wanted to raise yourself up a little bit, you could move that this bottom bar forward to get a more natural seated position. They were the first ones to integrate some of this, their breathable material, which then they called DVC, drain vent circulate. Um, it was built on an aluminum frame, again, adjustable with the back straps. And then you had the option of buying an adjustable lumbar pad for it if you needed to just need a little extra cushion. So now there, there's a few options when it comes to native. Um, this one I took out of their Manta Ray XT um, where you had that high low ability and they did that by just adding out little feet from the side. Um, again, still their breathable material. They added in more of a curvature to the seat system so you, had, you didn't have to purchase that extra lumbar support. You're getting it, it's kind of incorporated into the new seat system. Again, your adjustments are the same for your backrest. I mean, simple tri-glide buckle, just like you work in a backpack. A um, few other little improvements they've done. Um, they've gone to a metal attachment point here, where the, it used to be um, a, a nylon, extruded nylon piece. <clears throat> Over time and sun, uh, that little piece that holds this on could snap. Um, but now it's, it's, it's an anodized um, aluminum piece, so that, that, that's taken away. And from moving from high to low, they've actually added in hooks that clip into the kayak on a bungee. Um, so when you go to the high position lifting the seat up, it, lock, it almost locks itself in. Chris, what should we look for in terms of the material these seats are made of, regardless of the manufacturer? Um, look at the sewing. Um, these are hand sewed at their factory in Fletcher, North Carolina. Um, so they're very well sewn. Um, look at the actual backrest. Um, Again, we talk about support and comfort and longevity of sitting in the boat fishing for five, six hours a day. You know, you want the highest backrest you can get. It's going to give you the most support and comfort. Um, but don't be afraid to pull one out of a cock and just inspect it. Look at the sewing. Look at the stitching on it. Um, they integrate neoprene back here. Um, so when you do lower it, we're not stressing the fabric. The neoprene has that natural stretch to it. So we're not tugging and pulling on the actual seating material. They've kind of integrated in that. That, that relief that you can that you can open and close. And that's a feature that I don't think exists on other manufacturers. And no, Native's the only one that I, that yeah. I can think of. Um, that, that is pretty neat. Um, I know Jackson doesn't have it. I'm pretty, on the airflow seat from Wilderness, uh, it's two separate pieces, so it's not needed. Um, so that's great, because that's not going to stress this material and cause it to get correct. Uh, pulled out of, of place or floppy. Right, or you start you know, really putting some pressure on some stitching. You know, you're already sitting on yeah. that all day. Now you're pulling those stitches the other direction. So it's just a nice, just, it's fit and finish. It's, you know, just, you know, guys thinking it out and, and making it right. What about the frame itself? Uh, the frame's, uh, it's all aluminum, welded aluminum. So, again, you know, they build most, they, the theory is all boats are going to end up in salt water. There's not a, a Midwest seat and a coastal seat. Um, so it's all stainless or aluminum, the things that are going to hold up the best in salt water conditions. So you're not aware of anyone who makes this out of a frame that would, would die in salt water? There's no plastic frames out there on uh, reputable boats? On reputable boats, I would say no. Okay. Um, for major, major U.S. manufacturers, I would say no. So as long as you're looking at a name brand seat, the frame is going to be something yeah, It's going to be higher. It's going okay. to be some type of an aluminum frame seat. For, okay. for, for durability. With um, the Air Pro seat from Wilderness, um, their high-low, it's on a hinge system where it comes up and goes down. The hinging parts are plastic, but they are incredibly beefy, not cheesy looking. These are some serious 
moving pieces to bring it from the high low position. Um, but I think I wouldn't downplay that seat because of that because it is a well engineered seat for what it does and those plastic hinges work incredibly well. Okay. The first thing we got to think about is we adjust our bike seats up and down so we can pedal our bicycles properly. Um, you want to do the same thing while you're pedaling here except for now our adjustment is back and forth to get that leg length right. Um, and talking about how to now sit on tops, have fixed points for high low positions because the seat pan is trimmable, most companies now are able to integrate a high or low seat position. So you have the ability to change it on the fly while you're on the water pedaling. I know when I'm fishing and if I'm pedaling, I prefer to be in the high position. You get more of that drive, driving down feeling you get when you're riding a, when you're, when you're riding a bicycle. Um, but you know, going from seats that have high low options to now seats that have high low options and where you can slide them forward and backwards. For, for, for boats you can pedal, it's imperative because you need to get your leg length right. If you look at some of the more higher and fishing kayaks that you don't pedal, that are trimmable back and forth, you're allowed to kind of use your body weight as ballast and load the kayak to go fishing the way you want it. But if the bow is too far going in the water, you can always slide your seat back a little bit, use your body weight to get the boat level on the water, and again, still have that high and low seat position. Okay, we're over here to look at the Jackson seat as a way to explain about how different body types fit into different seats differently. Hey, everybody has a different butt, right? Everybody has a different back. So let's use this as an example of how you need to look at the seat versus the kayak. Like we talked earlier, Native kind of cured that keeping all those seat, uh, seat padding nice and tight with neoprene. Jackson opted to do it with um, again, just tri-glide buckles and, and nylon webbing, so you have the, adjust, you have the ability to, to loosen or tighten both your back and under your seat. Um, simply just, again, pull it if you need it tighter, if you need it a little bit looser, it loosens very simply. So one of the things that I, I mentioned to Chris that I didn't like about the Jackson seat is when you look at this angle right here, there's a big dead space where your back needs to hit the back of the seat to be able to pedal. Now, lumbar support, in other words. Now, Jackson does sell a Thermarest pillow attachment to fill that in, but that's something I didn't realize until after I'd been in the boat and had pedaled it for a number of hours that that was an issue. Now, I found a way to work around that. Uh, you can see that on one of my other videos. But again, that's an example of how every seat is a little bit different, and you need to look at your body type as you sit in these seats to figure it out. And actually, you know, you can take all these things out and you can sit on them on the floor of the shop and wiggle around in them to make sure they fit a little bit if you can't get out to do a demo on the water. If you're going to be in it all day, you need to be comfortable. Yeah, I bought the kayak for the shallow water capability. But you were able to adjust the seat system for right. comfort. Right, right. I was able to use the straps and the lumbar support that I created to uh, solve the problem. And you know, the material here is about the same, I think, is pretty much all these. They're it all is, breathable, it is. right? And it's all breathable, it's all padded, it all, it all um, definitely lets air flow through. You know, for one, if you're a little bit wet, you're going to dry. Summertime here in Southeast North Carolina, it's oppressively hot. So it's nice to not be just stuck on a foam pad fishing all day. So, and that's where you get that comfort too, because it's a little bit of give just like the easy chair at home. Um, I think Jackson's seat is probably a little bigger than Native's. Um, as in the width from left to right of the backrest and butt pan, uh, not by much an inch or two. Um, if you're a bigger guy, it might be a better option for you. Um, I mean, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. I find both seats comfortable. Um, I no, no weight control program. No, no, no. You don't need to lose any weight. No weight control. You know, it, again, like Steve said, the seats are removable. When you come in and ask us, we'll take them up, put them on the ground for you, because that's about the level you're going to be in the seat while you're in the kayak. It's not going to. That's not some kind of illusion where like, well, it was comfortable on the ground, now it's not comfortable in the boat. No demo day, take them out, put them on the floor, sit in it, see if it's comfortable for you. See if there's something we can adjust for you that you may not have thought that you could do with that seat. Maybe you didn't know about the strap systems on Jackson. It didn't feel well, but if we tightened or loosened it, it felt better. So that's it on seats, and you can see that seats are different, but quality seats all have consistent characteristics. And that's what you need to look for 
And to go back to the last point that I think Chris made is every body shape is different. Every seat is going to fit that shape in a little bit different way. And so it's got to be one of the criteria you use when you select your next kayak. And I'd like to thank Chris and Hook, Line, and Paddle him here in Wilmington on Eastwood for allowing me to force him <laughs> to share his knowledge with the world. Because I know I've got guys in Australia that watch my videos that also have kayaks. It's a long haul for you guys to get to Wilmington to see Chris, but you can sh we can share his knowledge here on the video. If you've got a perspective on seats, a good seat or a bad seat, throw in the comments below because everybody needs to understand the pros and cons of this critical part of a kayak. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Steve.